Welcome back to Baron's New Vegas Gun Guides. In this episode, we are hot on the trail of the Gauss Rifle with the other powered armored enemy solution. Developed by the United States instead of Germany or the Chinese, the Pulse line of weapon have an interesting history in the Fallout series of games. Much like the recharger weapons we looked at earlier, they all harken back to the 50s pulp sci-fi look of energy weapons, with large bulbous shapes and lightning accumulators or vacuum tubes strewn across the casing. Fallout 2 was the first time pulse weapons were seen, as it was the first time the player would encounter powered armored enemies. The YK-42 Bravo Pulse Rifle and the YK-32 Pulse Pistol emerged from the Wastes around 80 years after the Vault Dweller's original expedition and exile to the Wastes. In the California wastelands of the mid-23rd century, there was much call for the Pulse Weapons, although as a quirk of how the game engine worked, these Pulse Weapons utilized purely electrical damage a damage type that did not survive the transition to 3D. It did not work like the pulse grenades that did a special EMP damage that was useless against anything but a robot. Electrical damage was a different beast altogether. Combined with the weapon penetrate perk inherent to the YK-42 Bravo and the YK-32 weapons, the electrical damage also did quite a bit to armored foes and unarmored ones, with few exceptions like the floaters. Both weapons were created by the Yuma Flats Energy Consortium, a company with precious little information about it, and the only relic of their existence is these two weapons. But it is likely they were contracted by the United States Army Army, to develop these weapons to counter a proposed threat of Chinese reverse-engineered power armor, or if the Chinese would develop one of their own. The Pulse Gun of New Vegas, however, was allegedly built and developed solely by the United States Air Force, stored in Nellis before someone thought it would be better sequestered in Vault 34, for some reason. Regardless of the sanity of this idea, it still sits there waiting to be mass-produced and used by Veronica as a way to convince Elder Maxim to leave the hole in the ground. Now, this weapon uses explicitly an electromagnetic pulse to deal extra damage to robots and powered armor, and conceivably anything sufficiently advanced, like a Zack supercomputer. Whether it differs from the YK-42 Bravo and YK-32 weapons by the shape of its pulse or the range of frequencies is unknown, but it undoubtedly is far more effective on these rare enemies. For as the history of the EMP, the first EMP witnessed was solar in origin and occurred in September of 1859. It was the strongest geomagnetic storm to date and recorded, and it was theorized that another of its kind would have significant consequences in the modern era. As for the storm, okay, it was strong so enough that telegraph grid, operators were able to send messages without power connected for upwards of two hours using only the power from the solar storm. However, this storm was a gradual electromagnetic field. The devastating EMPs most people know are from nuclear weapons, distinguished as in EMPs. And most would be surprised at how little power a nuclear weapon needs to have a terrifying amount of electrical power. In fact, even the Fat Man launcher should produce enough volts to fry the firer's armor, which makes sense that the catapult is pneumatic in that case, although a ground burst detonation is much more limited than a high burst weapon. However, an air burst weapon can create a lightning bolt strength field, meaning everything on the ground suffers damage equivalent to an ungrounded lightning strike, but it hardly damages organic life at that range, which is tens if not hundreds of kilometers from the epicenter, much further than the actual nuclear blast. Ideally, the pulse gun is able to harness power more akin to that, as it leaves robots on the edge of mechanical life in a single shot. Now, at first glance, the pulse gun looks like nothing special. It only does five damage per shot and requires five small energy cells to shoot each pulse, making it worse than the BB gun and a total ammo glutton. It suffers from the same problem as the earlier pulse weapons with its low magazine and in this case five shots or 25 cells, but its extra damage to robots and power armor make it very exciting. At plus 250 damage to robots and plus 110 damage to working power armor, it blows almost any weapon out of the water for damage. Comparable to the Gauss rifle for power armor, and even using the same number of cells, although small energy cells are cheaper than microfusion cells, it fits in a much smaller package. 
It does take one whole second to charge and shoot, having a short delay before firing, and which requires some leading of the target, and thus has a low DPS of 5. With a 2 second reload it has a sustained DPS of 3.7. However, against robots that's a DPS of 255, and for power armor 115. And nothing will survive 5 shots except maybe the giant golden robo scorpion. It has a low spread of only 0.1, but no functional iron sights. Vats is definitely where this thing wants to live, with a small cost of 20 per shot given that it's a pistol, which is an efficiency of 0.25 damage per AP if against flesh, but 12.75 if against robot and 5.75 against power armor. Again, it is crucial to mention that this weapon is meant for those two foes and those two foes only. Now, crit performance is there, but it's not interesting. The added damage comes after the critical calculation, so the crit damage is only an extra 5 damage, and it has the standard 1x multiplier. Should be noted that some unofficial patches may change this. Now, the pulse weapon is a strange one, having a very small choice of targets, but will trivialize any combat with those enemies as long as the power hungry beast can be fed. A point Veronica brings up, as with only an energy weapon requirement of 25 and a strength requirement of 2, any wastelander could pick it up and destroy the brotherhood. And add a weight of 2, reducible to a weight of 1, it takes up almost no space. Now, the pulse gun, being a purely unique weapon, cannot be bought, but has to be found. And it can only be found in Vault 34 in the current version of the game. But in older versions, there is a possibility it can be purchased, in this case at the Silver Rush, with a value of 1800 caps. Now, given its status as unique, it's no surprise that it doesn't have any mods, and it is found for free as long as you can get the 100 lock picking to open the footlocker it's in, and you can survive Vault 34. For what it's worth, the weapon is standard durability for an energy weapon. At 495 standard, 584 bulk, 329 overcharged, and 195 max charge, it is nothing new. But unlike other videos where I go over the ammo, I will tell you you only need to use bulk ammo in this weapon. All other ammo types only modify the listed damage of 5. So putting max charge ammo only gives plus 2 damage, and you might as well throw away caps at that point. The only benefit standard ammo gives you, besides lower life, is that you have the minus 2 DT effect that you don't really need. So there is little reason to use anything other than bulk ammo, especially since you are going through 5 cells for each shot. And this weapon will quickly outlast all the encounters it is needed for being useless in the final battle since NCR Salvaged Armor, if you're playing Legion, is specifically immune to the extra damage since that armor lacks the electronics of full power armor. Now this weapon is one of the optional centers of Veronica's loyalty quest, being very glitchy even in fixed or modded versions of the game. For be note, it should only be picked up with her and with her quest, if you can help it. But if you are planning to kill the Brotherhood, go ahead and pick it up by yourself while doing one of the several quests in Vault 34. It requires running through the whole thing, so prepare your close quarters weapons and rat away. Now in conclusion, the Pulse Gun is the perfection of its intended goal. Like Gauss Rifles, transitioning between the isometric games and the 3D, it has gained monstrous power, but at a terrible cost. They both share a terrible ammo cost, but the Pulse Gun is, has a limited choice of targets, even more so in the Mojave. Although, if you are using Tale of Two Wastelands, it is king in the Capital Wastes, with all of its enclave and rogue robots. In the Mojave though, it is outclassed by the genius of the Big Empty, and their improvements on the formula. In reality, you won't have this gun when you need it, so when you have it, keep it on your person. You'll thank yourself later. Thank <laughs> you.